When does USCIS come knocking on your door? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. Today we're talking about marriage-based green cards, and specifically we're wondering, when does USCIS come knocking on people's doors? They don't do it in every single case, so in this video, we're going to explore the factors that might lead to a visit, what you can expect to happen at the visit, and then basically what happens after the visit. Some people wonder if USCIS comes knocking on every single case, and the answer to that question is no. They simply don't have the resources to come and verify the living arrangements of the couples in front of them in which one person is applying for a marriage-based green card. So they have to be selective. And what they've done is created a fraud indicators list. And would you believe it that we have a copy of the fraud indicators list? I'm gonna go over some of the points that you can find on that form that lead them to be more likely to come visit you at your house. Some of the main fraud indicators include when the beneficiary is in the United States and out of status. They simply believe that if someone has been in the United States, either without permission or overstayed their visa, and then they get married, that is a suspicious act in the eyes of USCIS. And that is one that makes it more likely than not that they're going to come visit you at your home. Another fraud indicator is when there have been multiple marriages. So we've talked about in other videos about how USCIS likes to inquire into all the history of all of your marriages. But if you've had more than one application filed for you as a beneficiary, or if you've been someone who has sponsored people in the past, these are all high on the fraud indicator list. Perhaps the biggest fraud indicator of all that really makes it likely that you're going to have a site visit is when the couple knew each other for a very short amount of time prior to filing. So if it looks like somebody enters the United States and gets married right away or marries someone that they met relatively shortly, I'm talking weeks or months, then that is more likely than not going to lead to a site visit and them coming to knock on your door early one morning. And the last main fraud indicator that makes them likely to come to your house is when you have immigration problems. So if the person is not only out of status, but if they've been put into removal proceedings or any kind of immigration problems in the past, that's more likely than not going to make them think that this case is fake and want to come knock on your door. So let's talk about the mechanics of what actually happens when they come knocking on your door. The thing that you should know is that this rarely happens before the interview. This usually happens after the interview. Sometimes it happens before, but more likely than not, it's going to be after your interview and after you've testified under oath about your living arrangements. The thought is that if they get you tied down under oath with your story, and then they're able to come to your house and disprove your story or prove that your story isn't true, they're going to be able to deny the case, which is what they want to do or what they're leaning towards doing when they think it's a fraud case. So you can expect that after your interview, they're going to come knocking on your door. That knock usually comes around five or six in the morning. They think that's the best time to check on a couple. We've had very few circumstances where this didn't happen early in the day. I think they book a couple early in the morning and then they do it sort of on their way to work. And they want to see if you're both there, if you're both staying in the house, if you're both staying in the apartment, if you're sleeping in the same bed. Now, when they show up, they're going to knock on your door and they should identify themselves. You should always ask to see their identification and you should write down the names of the officers. You should pull out a notebook and keep track of everything that happens. You want them to know that you're documenting your entire exchange with them. They, everything that's being asked is being documented, and you don't want them to be able to put words in your mouth. So have a notebook ready and a pen ready so that you can take notes as to who showed up, what time they showed up, what time they left. You have to be a good documentarian. I won't be there, or your lawyer won't be there, and we're not going to be able to advocate for you. So you want to make sure that everything's on the up and up. You want to make sure that you're holding them to their legal standards and that they're not doing anything that they're not supposed to do. The officers may conduct the whole interview out on your front porch or outside your apartment door. They may ask to come in. You don't necessarily have to let them into your house, but that might cause problems later on down the road. So if you're inclined to let them in and you want to talk to them, you should, but you should be careful with what you say. It's sort of the same rules that we say when you go to your interview, which are don't say too much, keep your answers short and sweet. They might want to ask to see around the apartment, and you should be willing to do that in most circumstances. Obviously, if there's anything criminal going on in the apartment, you don't want that to happen. And also, 
if your spouse is there sleeping or in the house, that's a good sign. And you're going to want to make sure that they understand that and that they interact with you and your spouse both. But what happens if one or both of you aren't home? We get a lot of questions on our YouTube channel and in our Facebook group, which is called Immigrant Home. And in that Immigrant Home Facebook group, people are always asking us, well, they came and knocked on my door and I wasn't there. What does that mean? Or they came and knocked on the door and I was there and my spouse was at work and they called my spouse at work. What does that mean? USCIS understands that people have lives. You shouldn't have to sit there waiting day after day for them to come knocking on your door. But it has to appear natural. It has to feel natural. It has to be truthful. So don't be scared and don't be thinking that you have to stay home all the time expecting a visit. But at the same time, you need to be ready for when they visit and you need to be able to explain the circumstances of your relationship. You know, if there's one thing I've learned being an immigration lawyer for all these years is that People live their lives in very different ways. No two couples are exactly the same. So the question is going to be, does this ring true? Does this seem honest? Does this seem legitimate? If there's no evidence of the spouse being in the apartment or in the house, that's going to be a major problem. But if the spouse just happens to be at work, that's okay, especially if they can get a hold of the spouse. You should be able to get a hold of the spouse, and the spouse should be willing and able to talk to them while they're at the house visit. We've seen that happen many times. And it's actually pretty effective if the foreign national or if the U.S. citizen doesn't happen to be home, if they're able to articulate why they aren't home and what they are doing, that goes a long way towards building credibility. These are not uh, in-depth interviews. Usually they might ask a few questions. Mostly they just want to look around, maybe take a few pictures and get a general feel for things. They're not going to stay there for four hours. It's going to be relatively quick. Now you may be wondering, are the only people that you talk to you and your spouse? No. Oftentimes they'll talk to neighbors, and most importantly, if you're in an apartment situation, they talk to the landlord or the property manager. They get a copy of that lease to see if the copy of the lease that you submitted is the same copy that they have on file. You'd be amazed at how many times we've had situations where people doctored their lease or messed around with their lease to make it look like they had added someone when they hadn't. People might have legitimate reasons for doing that because they don't want to pay more rent or whatever. But in the eyes of USCIS, that's a real fraud indicator, and that's going to be a major problem. So you have to anticipate that they might talk to your neighbors to ask, you know, when does he leave the house every day or when does she come home from work? We see that time and time again. The landlord can also be asked about the living arrangements, how long they've been there, whether they've seen you with other people. We've had landlords tell people, oh, that's not really his wife. He has this other girlfriend over on the side. You wouldn't believe the things that landlords tell people. I should probably do a special video just on landlords. But for the purposes of this video, you have to understand that it might just not be you that they come talk to. They might want to talk to the people that live around you. The one good thing about site visits is it usually means that your case is almost over. They usually do it at the end of the case, which means that if they've conducted your interview and if they've done your site visit and if everything looks on the up and up, you're probably headed to a relatively quick approval. Usually these things don't take a lot of time after that site visit. We see this a lot of times in our lawsuits when we sue USCIS. Sometimes they come and do a site visit, and then the case is approved shortly thereafter. So if there's any good to the fact that they came and knocked on your door, it might be that your case is going to be decided relatively soon and relatively quickly, and you should be getting your green card in just a few weeks. If you have questions about people coming knocking on your door, if you're worried about the strength of your case and you need our help, feel free to give us a call, 314-961-8200. You can email us at info at hackinglawpractice.com. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group, which is called Immigrant Home. We have over 8,000 members in Immigrant Home. We'd love to have you join us. We have people talking about immigration every day. And then we have our YouTube channel that you should think about subscribing to. That way you get updated whenever we make videos like this one or whenever we go live, which is usually three or four days a week on our Immigration Answers show. You can come on that show and ask me any question that you want. We go for a full hour, like I said, three or four days a week. And you can find that in Immigrant Home or on our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Hope you found this helpful and have a great day.